Welcome back, Trinidad and Tobago. And one of our final interviews this morning, Dr. Shanley Hazel, she's a dentist. And we're talking about dental care. At a time of COVID-19, you know, a lot of things we take for granted. Now everyone is being told to stay home. But there are med medical procedures which need to be conducted. Some people, like myself, you do have a routine checkup and cleaning to do, um, which I said, let's keep that for a little bit later. But, uh, you know, what do you really do? And what are some of the changes and practices, and particularly medical practices, that you need to look at and look to? Because you remember when you talk about your face, a dentist is practically in your mouth. Well, Dr. Hazel, good morning. How are you? Hi, good morning. Thank you so much for having me, Hema. Now, let's get straight into the conversation. You know, dental care in a time of COVID-19. How is this going to impact my dental visit? How is it going to impact your profession? Okay, so um, basically the Dental Council has recently issued very thorough, very clear guidelines to us dentists that we really should only be seeing absolutely necessary urgent dental, uh, dental um, patients. So. The routine things that we usually do, like the checkups, the cleans, um, fillings, anything that you know increases the air droplet or aerosol spread, you really should not be doing. Um, I believe they've they've um, recommended that we keep that uh, or postpone it uh, for about three weeks before we actually you know um, schedule anything that we should be routinely doing, and it's primarily to protect you know our patients, our staff. Um, and generally just the collective community. Um, so we've all had to really change our scheduling um, and really just be available for urgent dental care. When you, and if you have a dental procedure at this time, you know, because you're saying like if you don't have a, a, a sort of earth shattering life emergency with your dental care, you can postpone it. So that's a good one. I don't think anybody, I, I, I absolutely hate to go to the dentist, let me tell you this. Um, but <laughs> I'm sure I'm not the only one. Um, but you know, for dentists like yourself, how has this changed your practice? Because you do have emergency cases that you have to see. So what, how, had, how, are, how is your profession preparing for this and dealing with it? Um, well, collectively, I think um, the dentists in Trinidad, from what I see, we're very much um, supported You know, through, through social media. We have Facebook groups. We have the senior dentists who give us information, um, give us the latest. Even before the Dental Council issued guidelines, I know that the Dental Association, at the beginning of the month, before we had our first case, had a lecture where all the dentists can attend to get the update um, on the international uh, understanding of the COVID virus. And um, it's something that, you know, there's continuing research, that every day there's something new that we learn. And, you know, we're, keep, we kept, we're kept up to date, up to date with social media. Um, with respect to, you know, the things that we should be doing on routine care, it's, it's very important that we, as dentists, collectively um, postpone this. What we see, obviously, as a result, uh, as a consequence, we have a reduction in our daily flow of patients. Um, but we, we are the uh, frontline dental care providers, so with emergencies, we have to be available for patients. Um, and I say emergencies, things like pain, things like broken teeth that are, are painful, um, infection, you know, we, we have to be available to, to provide that care and that treatment. Now, for patients themselves, you know, what are some of the things that you want them to be aware of that they, you know, because when you talk about a dental visit, it's, it, you know, everyone says be aware and be a droplet. You're in someone's mouth. What are some of the precautions that patients themselves need to be aware of when going into to a medical profession, particularly a dental office? Well, we have very strict uh, guidelines. We have, be, even before um, this coronavirus, we are always at risk of, of um, passing on infection and that's why you know we're, we have very strict guidelines in terms of cross-contamination we ought to clean our instruments we have um, personal uh, protective equipment and wear that we wear so things like obviously the masks the visors the gowns the gloves um, we're always you know washing our hands before we see patients anyway um, but in terms of the extra measures things like um, you know, rub it down. We would we would routinely use that in dentistry, but if we have to go in and if we have to do any emergency dental treatment, we should be using rubber dam to protect our patients, to protect ourselves. Um, you know, um, I think patients know that you know they expect to to be safe when they do come to the dentist anyway. But 
you know, one of the things that the Dental Council uh, has recommended to implement is that, you know, we don't have anyone waiting in the waiting room. We ask them to perhaps wait in the car before they actually come to the appointment, call them into the clinic when they come in so that there's no kind of waiting area where I think they've suggested about six feet you should be away from someone else to, to reduce your risk. Now, you know, for you, you know, and I, I say medical workers are really some of the heroes that we don't, you know, they're those who are working in the, in the hospitals, but those who cannot close practice. And I know that a lot of offices, uh, healthcare professionals need to continue serving their patients. You've taken an oath uh, to serve and to protect life and to, you know, make sure that you are there for your patients. On a personal level, you know, are, what does it mean for you to continue to serve at a time when you do know that you're in an industry where you're more exposed to the risks? Obviously, there's anxiety because we can we see how the global impact that this this virus has. Um, we also see, you know, the 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 our own government responding very quickly, um, very uh, efficiently at it. So, you know, we've seen in the space of a couple of weeks, our lives have all been impacted, have all been effectively told to stay at home, only leave if it's absolutely necessary. We're seeing the global impact. We're seeing, you know, how it's it's shutting down economies and, and functioning of, of, of all these countries that are, you know, the typical first world countries. So of, of course, there is there is anxiety. Um, I think what's really critical um, is that we, you know, collectively come together um, and just play our role in in really trying to reduce everybody um, everybody's risks from from contaminating or from from contracting um, this very serious um, illness. Well, Dr. Hazel, I do want to thank you very much for joining us this morning, for sharing your thoughts, and we do wish you all the best out there, and to you and the rest of the medical thank fraternity. So thank you so much for having me. Thank you. For you and the thank rest of the so medical much. fraternity, um, Trinidad and Tobago really does owe you a debt of gratitude. When you listen to the stories of the medical workers who, uh, when I looked at an interview with uh, a medical professional out in New York, um, they don't have enough uh, personal protective equipment. But they have vowed and they have taken a Hippocratic oath to protect those who need them. So they know the risks that they're taking. So let's uh, take a moment and remember that our healthcare workers are the real heroes at this time, uh, particularly those who are going in not knowing what exactly we're facing because no one, this novel virus, the world is still trying to understand. I'm Hema Ramki soon. Please remember to be safe. Exercise, social distancing, do not leave your home. To all of the employees who need to come out to work, please be careful. And uh, as we say goodbye, I do wish you God's blessings and God's protection today.